This is AM Agenda. Thanks for your company this morning. Joining me now from Melbourne, Liberal, uh, Labor frontbencher Kelvin Thompson and in Brisbane, Liberal MP Steve Chobo. Gentlemen, thanks for your time. Steve, in terms morning, of the, morning, the, the, the budget hole now, $12 billion, you've got to sure. concede that the high Australian dollar is having by far the greatest impact here and really would have been the case under either government or either shade of political party, wouldn't it? Uh, no, I'm not going to concede that at all, Kieran. The reality is that the Australian dollar is a factor and we've never pretended otherwise. But you know what, Kieran? Uh, we've battled economic headwinds before. The single biggest factor here is this government's addiction to reckless spending. Now, Kieran, there's some inescapable facts. We know that Labor is currently earning uh, $70 billion more tax revenue than the Coalition got under their final year of government. We know this year that tax revenues are up about 7%. The government's earning more tax money this year than they did last year. Yet despite that, this tax and spend Labor government has got a massive budget hole again. We've got $170 billion worth of uh, deficits since Labor was elected. And it comes down to this a lack of discipline to make the hard decisions about what's in Australia's long-term national interest and an obsession by the Labor Party to keep taxing and taxing and taxing so that they can then get this pile of money and say, we're going to spend it here, we're going to spend it there, we're going to spend it over there, because they think there's some votes in it. And that is the fundamental problem. Kelvin Thompson, as Steve Chobo pointed out, the revenues are up 7% on the previous financial year, even though they're less than what had been expected. Is the government spending on expectation rather than what you've got? Well, Kieran, the challenge for Steve, who describes the government as being tax and spend, is to explain what the opposition would do differently. In terms of their public statements, they say we're going to spend more on defence, we're going to spend more on the east-west tunnel, we're going to get rid of the mining tax. So how does this add up? In terms of tax and spend, they say we're going to have a paid parental leave scheme where people will get six months off work on full pay to be funded by an increase in company tax on companies with an income of uh, greater than uh, five million dollars. So but it seems to me that Thompson, the opposition just, is all tax and spend. But it's not just the opposition that is saying this, it's the Grattan Institute, Macroeconomics, other think tanks and, uh, and, and organisations that are saying the government isn't just facing a new economic reality, you've got to face a new budget reality, make some structural changes, otherwise we will face deficits indefinitely. Well, there is a new budget reality, Kieran, no question about that. Uh, but the government has managed this economy in a way which has given us low inflation, low interest rates, the AAA credit rating and low public sector debt. And I believe we will continue to manage the, res the budget responsibly. We won't engage in slash and burn austerity. It hasn't worked overseas. It's not working in Queensland or Victoria. We won't engage in that. But we will pursue a responsible fiscal path. OK, Steve Chobo, your reaction and response to that argument that's been made by uh, Mr Thompson this morning, by Greg Combe, Penny Wong, that the coalition is yeah, planning sure. to slash but, and burn. And, and that, that's, I mean, that's what you're going to have to counter, that argument in the lead-up to the election. Uh, look, it's complete rubbish. You know, the fundamental problem here, Kieran, is that Julia Gillard is like an alcoholic. Every single day she'll come up with another set of excuses to justify poor behaviour and what's taken place uh, the previous day. The reality is Australians know they can't trust Labor with money. The Coalition has a strong track record. We delivered budget surpluses. The last time Labor delivered a budget surplus was in 1989. And the problem that we've got is that they've now developed $170 billion worth of deficits. We're paying $7 billion a year in interest, Kieran. That is effectively a brand new major hospital in every capital city around the country. And that's just what we're currently paying today in interest payments, thanks to Labor's tax and spending binge. Well, in terms of the cuts, though, would you, do you think that the, the, the Abbott-led opposition will have to articulate those sooner rather than later? To, We've already been out I there suppose, doing that, Kieran. To, but to deal with the government's campaign against you that you're going to slash and burn, cut to the bone, as they've said this morning. Well, you know, look, Labor is going to run every kind of red herring they can. They're going to try to scare people as much as they possibly can. I heard the ridiculous statement that Calvin just made earlier about, you know, austerity cuts to the bone. I mean, seriously, it's ridiculous. What we've made clear is that we're going to make measured decisions. Take, for example, the fact that we're going to allow, through attrition, there to be a reduction of 20,000 public servants in Canberra because that's how much the public service bureaucracy has grown in Canberra since Labor was elected. We're doing it through attrition. 
We've also announced that we're going to end the cash splash that sees us borrowing money from overseas to hand out to some families uh, with absolutely no connection whatsoever to schools and to All education. Right. So that's going to end. They're the kind of responsible decisions we'll make. We've spoken about the dollar. I spoke to Penny Wong about that this morning. I just want to recap what she had to say in regard to the persistently high Australian dollar and its impact on the on the on industry particularly. The dollar hasn't shifted much at all and uh, the reality is if you look uh, at uh, the figures at the moment what we're seeing is nominal GDP which is growth in values uh, below real GDP which is growth in volumes uh, for the longest period since records began so people might sort of I hear Joe Hockey today saying oh you know people should have anticipated this well Treasury didn't anticipate this. Kelvin Thompson, the dollar has been high for some time and there hasn't been much movement, as Pe Penny Wong said there. Uh, is Treasury, uh, they've seemed to be uh, struggling to keep up with movements in the, in the economy, certainly underestimating the impact of, of just how much of uh, a setback the high Aussie dollar is for Australian companies. Well, the, the dollar has been high for a long time and that combined with lower commodity prices and ongoing volatility from the GFC has clearly resulted in a hit to revenue. But I want to correct this idea that there is a public debt problem as a consequence of the stimulus spending. The fact is that our net public sector debt peaked at 10% in 2011-12, a tenth below the level of comparable countries. It's like someone with an income peaks, of 100... What do you mean it peaks, Calvin? So, that doesn't so make any it, sense at all. We are, we are, we, it hasn't peaked. We are paying it down now. You're borrowing more money. Steve, Steve no, you're not. Kelvin, you're borrowing more money. Is, let's hear Kelvin. Is, uh, 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 we know one will hear uh, what he's saying, uh, what either of you are saying. Kelvin Thompson, continue, sure. please. Our, our public debt is presently like somebody who has an income of $100,000 a year having a debt of $10,000. Our interest repayments are 0.5% of GDP. That is like someone with an income of $100,000 a year having an interest payment of $500. We are in much right. better shape than other Steve countries. Trevor, we are the envy of the world in this regard. Your quick response, particularly in the context of the AAA credit rating, it's still getting a tick of approval from all the, the major ratings agencies. Well, you know, I just heard the, the, the golden furphy then. Calvin Thompson said, oh, the public debt has peaked. I mean, ridiculous. Well, they're about to run up another 10, 20, maybe even $30 billion deficit this year alone, Kieran. And seriously, Calvin Thompson's sitting there telling us that debt has peaked. The reality is, under this government, debt is increasing every single day. $20 million a day in interest. We know that we've got another $20 billion budget uh, black hole this year alone. Debt is going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And the problem right. that Calvin's got is that he can sit here and say, oh, but this is only a small amount owing on a big income. It's getting worse every year. And it's almost reached a stage, almost, where it's unsustainable. We've only got a minute left. Just very quickly, gentlemen, both of your views, if I can, on the idea of a referendum on the issue of same-sex mar marriage. Calvin? Uh, Kieran, I've got nothing in principle against the idea of giving the Australian people a vote on an issue like this, but in practice you can't get legislative change unless you have a vote of the Parliament, a vote of the Parliament to amend the Marriage Act, and that would require the Liberal opposition to give its people a conscience vote. That is where the action needs to be here. Steve Chobo, 20 seconds, your view? Well, well, we've made our policy clear. Uh, look, what happens after the next election once there's been a, a reset in terms of policies and those types of things we'll have a look at. Steve Chobo, Kelvin Thompson, thanks, gents. Appreciate it. Good Pleasure. to talk with you. That's all for AIM Agenda. Thank you for your company. The latest news is next.